Hi, Miss Clara's class, Miss Walter, Mrs. <laughs> Walter. Um, we're going to be extracting the honey. This is the end of the year, and we'll show you the honey room in a few minutes. But this is what the boxes look like when they're full. And sometimes the boxes are half full, sometimes they're all full. You can see that one, that side's empty, and that side has some wax on it. And you can see the honey glistening in there. So we're going to extract that out of here. The bees love sticking stuff together, so some of these frames are really kind of jammed in here. Um, so we have a hive tool that'll take it apart. I usually take the wax, scrape it off the top of here, because all that wax gets melted down later and gets turned into candles. Um, we'll show you some candles later on too, because that's a lot of fun, because it's usually we make that around Christmas time. So that's just all really nice wax that's gonna be melted and cleaned up. So what we do with the frames is we take them out, and you can see how that one's kind of fatter than the wood. And that's exactly what you want to find. So the reason for that is when you use something called a, a hot knife, a capping knife, you just run it along here. Got to make sure your fingers are clear. And then you just run it up like this and all the wax drops off. A little bit of honey gets in here too, but the uh, it'll drip through the screen that I made here. And then later on we'll just, we'll, um, melt everything down, take the honey out of that. So you see there's still a little bit of wax left in here. These, the honey's gonna come out of those fine, but anytime there's a little bit of wax like that stuck on here, that has to come off because otherwise the honey will get trapped in there when we spin it down. So that frame's ready to go. And I have a 12 frame extractor, which is right there. And I'll show you that in a minute. And we just have to get 12 frames that are kind of equally balanced because that's a big centrifuge. It's going to spin all the honey out of there in about five minutes. And once we start getting enough honey in here, we'll let it pour into the filter and get it filtered clean. You don't want to go These are just empty boxes for when I have a lot of beehives. And those are waiting for next year to be filled. Um, we have an audience here. And these are the boxes for this year. So we don't have that many, but these are full. Some of them are completely full, some are half full. And we'll get all the honey out of those. This right here is a centrifuge. And you can see the centrifuge, how it spins. It has a little motor on top. The frames will go right into there. And then all the honey spins to the side and then drips down to the bottom. And once it's full enough, there's a little, little uh, spot right here. And it's gonna just drip into here that bucket has a screen on top, that bucket has a screen on top, and we'll just um, get all the bee parts and wax and stuff out of the honey. Already like a professional. So the hot knife's getting the ones that can reach, but the bees didn't build this, didn't build the deep enough honeycomb, so Miss Walter is having a, some trouble there, so she's gonna take the little scratching tool and all the stuff that doesn't get reached by the knife, kind of just take the top off it. And that way every single cell is going to be exposed and all the honey will come out of the cells. And the stuff that's on the fork goes down into the strainer here, the honey drops through, and then the wax, once it's clean of most of the honey, let the bees take off the rest of the honey and then we'll just melt it down and make candles out of it. So here's the bees really did a nice job and you see how all the cappings are coming off and there's honey dripping into the air and nice and thick and then this is going to be nice and uniform for next year. Thickness and the bees will just have to add honey and put a cappings on it, the coverings, and they don't have to do a lot of work because if they have to build new honeycomb it takes a lot of wax and then they can't put honey in it until there's enough honeycomb. It's messy, but you get to eat your mistakes, so it makes <laughs> This is what the box looks like when it's partially empty. And if you see up in here, all this stuff right here has to come off because this is propolis and it's like a glue. And the bees stick everything together. It makes it harder to use the hive next year. And you see it all down the side here. I'm gonna scrape all that stuff off and actually save it because there's a little pile of propolis it's actually got anti antiseptics in it and some people will chew that um, if they have a sore throat 
and it almost tastes kind of minty, but it's very, very sticky and it gets stuck in your teeth. And you can buy that at a health food store. Sometimes it's liquid, sometimes it's chewable little capsules. So I'm gonna load up the centrifuge here. They go in a certain way. And since these frames are all the same size, some are heavier than the others because they have more wax in them, but we'll just load it up here. And once all 12 are in here, then we'll turn the thing on and spin it, and then that'll collect the honey. Sometimes the bees will even put wax just across, making like a little bridge between the frames. That really doesn't do anything except give a little bit extra wax. And then this is how I scrape the top off here. And all that wax, we melt it down and turn it into candles. Here are some extra frames that are kind of a problem. This is one that's empty. You can see a little bit of beeswax still in there, but the wax moss has gotten to it, so I cleaned all the, cleaned all the wax off of here. That has to be filled with, honey, um, with honeycomb starter, and then they'll build out the frame. This one broke. I pulled it out of the hive, I wasn't careful, and so I have to repair that. And this one is full of dead bees and drones. See how much higher the drone is here? Because they're bigger, bigger, um, they're bigger bees and they're also, there are bigger babies inside the, uh, inside the, the cells. And then this is, these are dead bees here. Now they froze, these guys aren't living anymore. So just have to pull those out of there and next year the bees can use it again. And you can see this trail right here is a wax moth. Um, and wax moss starting here and there, but because this frame's already been frozen, they're no longer alive. This is something fun to do. This is just a jar where you put some honeycomb starter in there, and if you take the cover off and put it upside down on top of a hole in the hive, the bees will put honeycomb right off of there, and then it looks like they built it in there on purpose, and then you just fill it up with clear honey, and it's a nice little decorative jar you can show people figure out if you could do a fair or something like that ask people how they've honey how the bees got in there and nobody can figure it out and sometimes the bees, bees do weird things see how there's dents and hollows in here and then there's some honeycomb in the side of the box and that was the other side of it now why the bees made a little groove like that just so they can walk around and not fill that with honey I didn't have time to ask them I don't know So there's something called bee space, and bees will travel through a very specific size opening. If it's too big, like this, they're going to fill that up with comb. This is a hive. This is a um, a super that's not very doesn't have a lot of honey in it. But also see how the on the ends here, these little gaps, right down in here. See all that stuff? That's all propolis. Here's one that got cleaned out. So if it's too small, they'll fill up the hole, and if it's too big, they'll put honeycomb in there. You can see it right in there, because they only need a certain space to crawl, and they'll use every single space, a bit of space that they have, because usually they're inside trees, not inside boxes like this, and inside the trees, it can get pretty crowded with a big hive. So these are medium frames here, and because I have some small ones in here also, they have to be balanced, because once the honey comes out, this thing is going to shake like crazy if the wrong size frames in here. So this is a small frame. And that's a medium one. You can see the difference in size there. And now we're gonna start the, the centrifuge. You hear the centrifuge going on, there's a motor. We start off slowly because it's pretty heavy. In a few minutes you're gonna see the honey coming out. The frames are empty, and if you look way in the bottom, kind of hard to see with this. You can see all that honey sitting down there. Let's see if there's any honey coming out of here. It 
there's a little bit of wax and stuff in there from our scrapings and that's what the filter is going to keep clean. Fresh honey straight from the hive. Mm -mm -mm. That one almost tastes a little bit minty. We'll let that fill up. Oh, <laughs> I was like, hey, that was a beef. Mm -hmm. It's definitely not that hot. Well, this is usually you spin it down three, four times and fill it all up, and then it just comes pouring out. Be. So there's a bucket and has a, the honey on it waiting to be to filter through. And then if you look underneath here, it's going to go slowly. See the little drip under there? And then we'll keep going until those boxes are empty. <laughs> and those are two, two full buckets of honey. around it. Hope you enjoyed this. Thanks a lot. This is Walter's class. We're just about done here. This is the wax we've collected so far. That obviously has to be cleaned and then melted down. The last bucket has all wax and stuff in it which will be cleaned off so there's no filter in this one. You can see the empty extractor and the honey just slowly dripping down out of our bucket that we had separated from the, with the wax. There's still a lot of honey in here and usually what I'll do is just leave it outside when the weather gets warmer for the bees and they'll lick all the extra honey off and they'll help clean off the wax. And then we melt it down. Here's what some of the final product looks like. Once that wax is cleaned up, then I pour it into just a bread pan and get the pure beeswax like this. Still needs to be a little bit cleaned in here and a little bit of the junk off the bottom. But once it's all clean, that's the color right there, that light yellow. <clears throat> we then put it into different molds. And it's hard to tell what this is because the mold is upside down. But the candle wick gets pour, pulled through here, gets a port in the bottom, hot wax gets poured in there, the same thing as this one. So this one turns out to be a Christmas tree. This one turns out to be a little honey bear. See that? We also can make pine cones. And you see the honey bears, there's two of them here, different colored wax, lighter and darker wax, and then also make candles out of birch bark, out of birch trees. A lot of cool stuff we can do. And here's another mold, this is an antique candle mold, the regular kind of candles. Each one of these is a candle, the wick goes through here, comes out the bottom. Wax gets poured in there. See it there? So there's eight different candles that can be made at one time. Besides honey, that's some of the other stuff we can do with while keeping bees. There's my little jar of honey right there for my tea. This is what one of the candles looks like when it comes out of the mold. See how it's got a little seam in the side? because they're not dipped like most candles are nowadays. Kind of an antique way of doing it. The bottom still has to be finished, so it goes into a, a candle holder, and here's a little bit of wick that gets cut off at the end, so we can pull them out of the mold. Really fun to do, and man, the house smells great when we're doing this.